um, adaptation of the book by Ian McEwan, uh, for who, who also wrote the screenplay, directed by Dominic Cook, starring Sir Sharon and Billy Howe. So they're a, a couple uh, in the early 60s go to a hotel uh, by the beach for their honeymoon. It's clear that neither of them have been physically intimate before. And as the wedding night looms, their anxieties seem to increase. And as the evening plays out, we flash back to their earlier lives. We see the moments that have made them the people that they are, sort of laying the groundwork for their current struggles with the, you know, with the ideas of intimacy. They first uh, meet at a CND meeting. Where he's just discovered that he has uh, got a first, which he didn't expect to, but he can't find anybody to celebrate with him. So he He's wandering around, he has a couple of drinks and he wanders into a CND meeting because he just needs to tell somebody how well he's done and he meets Sir Sharon's character. Hello. Hello. Would you like one? It's all about a hydrogen bomb landing on Oxford. Can't think of anything better. <laughs> Do you mind if I tell you something? I've got to tell someone. Tell me. I say, do we know you? I just heard. I got a first. In history. That's fantastic. Let's get on with handing these out, shall we? All right. So you can hear from that clip, which I think very much sums up the, you know, the tone of the movie. It's, it's to do with, uh, you know, with, with things that are, uh, that are repressed, that are, that are understated, that are sort of held within. They have... Very different backgrounds. She comes from a posh family. Emily Watson is supremely imperious as her mother. There's a brilliant scene in which the father says, those green things, what do we call them? She says, they're mange too. And she manages to wring every sort of, you know, moment of uh, withering contempt out of the words mange too. And they see him as at one point, he's referred to as a bit of a country bumpkin, somebody who's more rooted in trade than perhaps they would ideally like. She's a musician, he's a historian. She dreams of performing in the particular concert hall. He wants to write a book about figures in history who have been sidelined. And then as we learn more about their their families, we start to get this picture of how they've become who they are. His mother is an artist who's suffering from, um, from brain damage uh, and her behaviour has been affected by an accident which has caused her to become weirdly uninhibited. She is in a Richard Sacharone's character is an obsessive perfectionist. She keeps using the phrase, there were no mistakes, nothing went wrong. And it beca becomes clear that this kind of, this perfectionism, this, this often nothing to go wrong, is rooted in something in the past. And we start to see suggestions of where that might have come from in the behaviour of those around her in her family. Uh, it's a really interesting film because it's a very difficult subject to do on screen. You know, you think... Traditionally, cinema has had a, a lot to say about sort of sexy romantic relationships. They're very easy to sell, you know, uh, that famous thing about, you know, all you need for a movie is a gun and a girl. That idea about the things that, that are traditionally cinematic ideas that will work. And this is almost the opposite. It's like taking that and, and, and making it, you know, de deconstructing it, making it distant, asking where this distance comes from. And... On the one hand, you have Chesil Beach outside, which is sort of wild and, you know, raw and elemental. But everything that's going on in the hotel room is really awkward. And there are these silences and repeated shots of people's feet being awkwardly balanced atop each other. Everything's to do with, with physicality. I think the performances are great. I really did believe in, in the central couple and their alienation and their, you know, their, their difficulty with intimacy. I thought the time shifts were handled really well. It's very difficult when you're shuffling time frames like that. And one of the th interesting things that the film does is it uses music both to delineate and to bring together different time frames. So you know where you are, you know exactly where you are, but also music is used to, to put different time frames next door to each other to make you know, connections between the past and the present. It's also admirably frank about its subject matter, which, as I said, is really not the sort of stuff that cinema traditionally thrives upon. I think there is some question about, as we move into the the later period of the film, whether it's whether the way in which it chooses to move the narrative it, it is going to entirely work for everybody. I, I have to say, on an emotional level, it did for me. 
on an emotional level, I kind of stuck with it, despite the fact that there are moments in the later section in which it was it, the, the, the plot contrivances became too much. There were certain cinematic techniques that had to be used to tell the story of the changing time period. Mm -hmm. And I found them slightly distracting. I mean, almost distracting enough that, that it stopped working. And yet there was an emotional truth underneath that did hold it together. And I think what that says is that when the film is working, it's doing it's doing the job well enough that it will see you through the slightly difficult periods. I also thought it was actually very moving. And, and there, there's, there is a sort of tragedy at the heart of it about this kind of this lack of connection, about what love means and and you know the, whether or not decisions made in an instant can blight a lifetime and also the, the, it touches on some very dark material it does it quite discreetly but there is a there is a sort of deep lying darkness in the background of it all so i thought it was a, it was an ambitious attempt to do a, a very very difficult novel that has a very good crack at it um i think there are there are some problems I think it's a hard story to tell in the cinema, but I thought it did it pretty honourably.